Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Uh, my name is Jeff Gibby. I'm going to go ahead and kick us off today. Uh, we have another session with Rahu and Mohindar. Uh, they've been absolutely great so far. Looking forward to it. So let's go ahead and get to the legal disclaimer. Good afternoon for most of you. Good morning for those of you that are in my time zone. <laughs> um, and whatever it is, I hope you're having a great day. So today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software app plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So with that being said, Today, uh, now I get to talk a little bit about Rahul Mohindar. Uh, I know a lot of you haven't had the privilege of meeting Rahul. He is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Um, but one of the things I'll say about Rahul uh, as we're getting going, uh, number one, uh, I love the way he has the ability to really kind of explain uh, and simplify and really teach some good technical analysis. And um, uh, uh, that's evident in everything that he does. Uh, two, I'll say that uh, Rahul is featured in CNBC, CNN India. Um, uh, he does, uh, he makes his living uh, both by trading and by teaching people in India how to trade. Uh, we have a lot of history with uh, with Rahul. He's been with us for uh, a number of years, like decades uh, would be the proper term there. And uh, in fact, as many of you know, I, I think I've actually given more classes on his RMO system than he has at this point, but what, uh, I don't think we're running the contest. I started trading with his original RMO back in the day, and uh, it's a system that's time-tested. It's proven. It works really, really well. Um, he's going to show a bit of that today. He's going to show a bit of some of the other methods that he uses, and I just can't say enough good things about Rahul. Um, you're, you're in for a treat today. Uh, let's go ahead and get him started. So, Rahul, I'm going to go ahead and change the screen over to you. I'm going to let you start talking, and uh, we'll just get this thing rolling. All right. All right. Hopefully you see the blue screen. It's coming through. And I will say for everybody that's listening, if you have questions, um, go ahead and ask them as, as Rahul go, gets underway. I'll do my ha best to answer them. And at the end, we'll also do some questions and answers, time permitting. All right. Rahul, it's all yours. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, welcome, friends. Uh, Jeff, that was a very kind introduction. I genuinely appreciate the fact that you started trading with the Armo, and uh, it worked out well for you. But uh, Jeff, I must mention, is a great guy, and his knowledge on Metastock and Zenith is just so amazing. The way he handles it, I think there are very few people in the world who can handle it that well. I mean, I've sat through his classes, and I can tell you he's, he's uh, equally... Uh, a super pro if I could use that term in terms of using Metastock. So a lot to learn from him and his sessions. I always learn something more when I meet him and see him talk. And it's we've spoken together uh, live in many sessions. And I think uh, it's great to learn that aspect as well in terms of how to use such a powerful program in Metastock and Metastock Zenith to its full advantage. So there's no end to that learning curve. Uh, Jeff, totally appreciate what you do. Uh, thank you, Metastock, for putting this together. I, again, credit Metastock each time for the fact that they put these sessions together for users with the objective that you as traders, you as users, do well with what you have in terms of software and make the most of it. So this uh, imparting of knowledge is a very important process beyond just being a software provider. So, uh, again, uh, much respect to that whole initiative taken by the Metastock team and Jeff. So without further ado, today, what am I going to talk about? Number one, uh, I speak to you as a trader to a trader. I speak to you as someone who's traded these markets for over 20 years. Uh, besides being a panelist on Bloomberg and CNBC India, I have been looking at uh, the markets uh, from a very long time, in fact, from my teens, and very actively trading for a good 20, 22 years. And when I look at the option scenario, I, mean, I think the day the derivatives segment opened up in India, that's when I started trading derivatives. And today I don't restrict myself 
to the uh, local Indian market where I reside. I also look at global markets, including uh, Australia, certain Asia Pacific markets. I also cover the US markets. But uh, I can tell you there's a, there's a huge opportunity when it comes to options as well. Now, today I'm gonna be talking about stocks and options. So don't think this is restricted to any one asset class. But before I get into uh, a lot of detail, one of the elements I like to discuss is a lot of people who are thinking, should I trade options or not? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Uh, we need to understand that the markets become very volatile. The market gives us a lot of opportunity, but at the same time presents to us with this volatility, a strong amount of risk. And to handle risk, options is one of the best instruments and tools out there that can help you I wouldn't use the word eliminate the risk, but at least help you taper down that risk to a strong degree. Besides, even if you want to trade directionally and not just use options as a risk mechanism, there too, it offers us a huge opportunity with a small investment vis-a-vis -vis actually buying the equity. So options as an arena or as a segment or as a asset class should not be ignored because it allows you to go both long and short without actually owning the stock. You could be selling short, you could be trading that downside, which is a very important aspect in our markets. I see a lot of traders out there who are always trying to buy and then sell. In other words, invest or trade long and make money. If you're not gonna focus on the sell side of the market, if the market does go into a bear phase, which could happen, we wouldn't be prepared, we wouldn't be able to exploit that whole downside. So we need to have in our arsenal, we need to have in our trading gear, the ability to go short, tools that can point you to that direction of going short as well. So it's important to box with both hands, as I would put it, the bull hand and the bear hand. There's no reason why you should restrict yourself to buying only. Right, So options gives us that opportunity to balance risk. It gives us that opportunity to trade the downside. It gives you that opportunity to get into the market with a lower uh, capital as well and understand the kind of risk that you're deploying. Of course, there are pros and cons to it. There's no end to discussing this. Uh, of, and you know, as I'll go across today, I'm gonna talk first about the inbuilt Armo and Metastock and some of the ATM studies as well that I use. And these are studies I use every day uh, with my trades. And I practically do trade a large bit of options myself. So really what you're seeing is a lot of what I do and there's nothing to hide from it. I think we all have a lot to learn from it. So hopefully today's uh, session will be more practical, uh, more oriented to how you take those trades. But I think I'd like to kick it off by saying, when you use the RMO oscillator or the Rahul Mohinder oscillator, if you're wondering what RMO stands for, for those of you who are new to it. So the RMO is an oscillator I designed that could help decide whether the primary trend or the longer term trend the major trend, give it whatever word you want, is positive or negative. So we're really looking for an opportunity to buy the market if the longer term trend is up and obviously try and trade on the sell side if that RMO is below zero and the trend is down. So when you look at a trend, and this is a classic uptrend that you have typically, you'd notice that there's no one straight line move. You have a few bars that go straight line up, but then there's a lot of backing off, a lot of these peaks and troughs. You know, the market pauses 10 bars, pauses 20, 30 bars, and you, you need to understand that is this a pause? Is this a correction? Is this a healthy correction? Is this a correction within a major long-term uptrend, is it really an opportunity for me to buy in simple words? You need something to iron out these multiple market swings and present to you simply that the long-term trend is bullish or bearish. So the RMO nails that long-term trend down in the form of an oscillator. And before I quickly jump to pictures and diagrams and examples of it, we need to understand how we trade it. If the RMO is above zero, we are concluding an uptrend and therefore we're gonna be looking for blue bars and buy arrows. Now I'm gonna to come to this in a bit. 
So let's dive in straight by looking at an hourly chart this time of uh, this is a chart of Google that we have up here. You can see the market was in a nice uptrend in the last week of August. And then we had the downtrend, which came in uh, from the end August, the 30th of August onwards. And look at that histogram on top. That is the RMO. That is the oscillator that I'm referring to, which decides my longer term trend. If it's above zero, then you're bullish. If it's below zero, which it is from 30th of August approximately, you're bearish. So basically, the entire previous week, you've been looking at selling opportunities. You've been interpreting this as a bear market trend when you look at that intraday chart of Google. Now, when you look at the previous two weeks, you're looking at this uptrend where you understand the RMO has been bullish and above zero, and basically you trade on the long side. You're not attempting to trade sell signals. You're really looking for buy signals. You're using every drop as an opportunity to get in. So the long-term trend is established very simply. Some of you may be wondering that, uh, is there an easier way to interpret it? It's actually pretty simple because all we're looking at for is it above zero or is it below zero? in terms of understanding is it bullish or bearish. Now, don't worry about the curvature, the shape, the size, the slope. Don't worry, it's gonna keep rounding up and down. We are not really so worked up about it. Where I kind of want your beepers to get on is when you come really close to zero because that's when you realize maybe I'm at a point of change. That's why I like to keep that oscillator on. It gives me that visual feel of understanding, hey, I'm coming that close to zero. Am I gonna possibly topple the uptrend and move into a downtrend. So that's a very important signal to me. That's why I want it up there. Now, you also want to consult the x-axis. So if you are someone who doesn't use the oscillator and you're trying to save your screen real estate, you probably are looking at the x-axis ribbon, which labels for you the RMO bullish zone and the RMO bearish zone. And when you look at the RMO bullish zone, it's simply the fact that the RMO is above zero and bearish zone uh, staple that as bearish because the armor is below zero and you're really looking for sell opportunities. Now, the point is, where do I specifically buy or sell using the armor and why do I want to trade in the direction of the armor? Number one, the armor helps us establish the primary trend or the long-term trend automatically. And there are definitely three clear advantages of trading in the direction of that primary trend. Now, what are those simple reasons why we trade in the direction of the primary trend? Number one, it increases our odds of winning. Now, let's say that if you have a river going upstream and you're trying to go against it, it's not gonna work. It's gonna be more effort, more tedious, and more failures. But if you are gonna be going in the direction of the flow, you're obviously gonna have greater odds of winning. You're also trading in the direction of the force, of the stronger force to be more precise, which means again, you'll get an accelerated performance because we as traders are always looking for that accelerated performance because ever the moment we buy a stock or the moment we sell short, immediately onward, we're looking for uh, instant gratification, instant results. I mean, that's kind of natural because we as traders do want that impulse feel. We want to, you know, we think that the moment we bought it, it should not down take from here on. It's only going to go up, right? But that doesn't happen. It's the stock market and we see it going up and down and we've got to be prepared both ways, which is why we need things like a stop, which is why we need things like a trailing stop. And we'll talk a little bit about those as well as we go along. So trading in the direction of the stronger force is what I'm trying to advocate. Trading in the direction of that longer term trend to give you that edge is what I'm advocating. And when we say primary or long term trend, I often get the question is, what is long term to you, Rahul? Is it five days? Is it five months? Is it five years? Is it two years? What is long term? I define it very simply as 60 bars, six zero, 60 bars. So if you're looking at a daily chart, 60 bars would be uh, as good as three months of data because you've got 20 trading days a month. So we're looking at three months of data on a daily chart. If you're looking at say a five minute chart, just to be drastically extreme, 60 bars would be just one trading day. So uh, 60 bars or greater is what I'm looking for, a minimum of 60 or more. That's what I would call my longer term trend.
Now, when you look at entering a new trade, now I want to come to some rule-based models. And again, whilst I like to channelize things on a rule-based approach, I'd also like to remind you that this is not something which I want you to uh, make a black box out of. I want you to actually understand it. I want you to be able to segregate even within this the quality of trade. Which are the trades you're going to be focusing on? Which are the trades you are going to be laying more emphasis on? Which are the trades you're also going to be avoiding? Right? And I'll also discuss some of the aspects related to options as we go along because one of the ideas of today is to give you this blend in terms of how I use it for options as well. So first let's understand the base system and once we're done with the RMO I'll bring in the options elements. So the buy arrow, the blue bar and the RMO being above zero, right? These are three different signals I need. I need all three of them to synchronize in order for me to take a buy decision. Now, why do I need all three? When you look at a buy arrow, we're looking at the short term trend. So the RMO does all the three different things it needs to. A, it identifies the short term trend and stamps arrows on the chart. Then it identifies the medium term trend and shades the bar colors into a blue bar or a red bar and those bar colors represent the medium term trend. And then the oscillator itself, which is the RMO itself, points us in the longer term trend direction, which is bullish or bearish. In other words, if it's above zero, it's bullish, and below zero, it's bearish. So therefore, when we have a synchronization that the short term, medium term, and long term have come in together, where all three different uh, lengths of indicators have come in together, that's the point I want to channelize a buy or sell, which is why I tell a lot of traders that focus on the system itself, focus on using the same rules on the same stock 10 and 20 times in a row to realize are you 70% accurate? Because otherwise what happens is we keep changing the stock and you never realize your actual performance. Another problem with performance I see is that some traders tend to you know, keep toggling between time frames. And I, I always, always alert traders that do not toggle between time frames. You know, there are people who say, look at the daily and the weekly and the monthly, but by the time you confirm everything, you probably are almost 75% done in terms of that uh, trend journey. So don't wait for everything to confirm in terms of daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and we can go on. But then uh, what I'm trying to suggest is the Armo is already doing that short term, medium term, long term, synced into one solid template and that's what I'm going to go with. The problem with us is we start trading on a five minute and we make that a 60 minute chart suddenly. It's because we've started losing money many a time. You started buying on a daily signal and it doesn't work out, comes close to your stop and then you convert it to a weekly. And you say, you know, you take some solace in saying, okay, oh, you know, but the weekly is all right and I'm going to hold on to that trade. So that's the wrong approach. That's what I don't want you to get into. Focus one time frame, focus one template, focus on a template like the Armo, which handles a short term, medium term, long term, which is why I, I, I like to simplify things for me. I'm, I'm very much someone who advocates uh, ease, advocates using a template that looks at all the intervals and then comes to you. So when you look at the RMO uh, signal over here, we're looking at four different vertical lines and I wanted to quickly come out on this chart to explain to you the importance of each of these signals. The first one is actually the most important buy signal, which we see in early April. So why is this so important? It's got a blue bar. It got the arrow three or four bars before. And we have the armor which turned from a bearish to bullish. Notice everything doesn't happen on the same day. First comes the arrow, then comes the bar color. And finally, we also look up and see that the armor is above zero. So it doesn't have to be that the arrow, the color and everything will sink in bang on one day. It could happen in phases and all we want to do is identify the point where all three have synced in. In this case, early April is here. So that's why we're going to be buying this market and that's the most important signal. Why is this the most important? Because it's come after a bunch of red bars. Usually if it comes after, you know, 10 plus red bars, if it comes after a bearish armor or triggered sell armor, 
and then rotates into a buy, it's a first buy signal. Why is this buy not that relevant to me? It's a second buy signal. A second buy signal because you have, you know, a, a buy signal that is coming within an already triggered uptrend. It's not like you have 10 odd red bars. It's not like the RMO was bearish behind it and going into bullish for the very first time. The first Time was right here when Armo bearish rotated into bullish. So that rotation's already happened. You want to be looking for the first breakouts. This is a, a third breakout, a fourth breakout. The, you know, I'd like to call them add ons. It kind of helps you uh, stay with the trade, it kind of helps you trail your stops, it helps you uh, basically remain. Can, you know, with conviction long into that stock, but I don't necessarily enjoy buying a second breakout and a third breakout. You know, the, the most meaty, the most potential breakouts are gonna be the first breakout. So let's uh, remember to focus first breakout, right? Now, when you bring in this rule, even on the sell side, what you're looking for is a red colored bar, a red arrow, and notice they again happen different days. Here comes the red arrow, the short term signal. Here comes the red bar, the medium term. And then finally, why am I marking the line there? Why am I marking the red line there? I'm gonna be selling below the low of that bar because that's when the RMO is bearish. I always believe we should buy strength and sell weakness. And the simple reason why I say sell below the low of the bar is because it helps confirm. Now look at this red bar over here. You got a red bar, you got the RMO which twitched from bullish to bearish. You were ready to go. Don't just randomly short it, short it below the low. In this case, you have not triggered below the low. So that circle red bar over there, the low of that bar is not triggered, it's not fired, the trade's not happened, you haven't concluded a bearish cycle. Unlike here where you have the red bar. So is the RMO necessarily gonna help me pick tops and bottoms? No, for that we have other tools which are tools like the counter trend studies, but the RMO is more trend following and there's no harm in being trend following because again, I keep stressing this that nobody's gonna award us for catching the top or the bottom. You're as good if you bought and made 5% from here to here or whether you bought and made it from here to here. It doesn't really matter. It matters is what are your baseline results? What's your uh, balance sheet? Trade in a more confirmed, organized fashion that's what's more relevant to me. Performance matters beyond being a bottom and a top tweezer, right? So let's focus on results. Let's focus on the fact that we're gonna be trading when we're in a confirmed sink of short, medium, and long term, the arrow, bar, color, and RMO to simplify, and that's when we're gonna be taking trades. Now, another way you can improve the RMO's performance. So the first way I taught you how to improve the RMO performance is focus on the first breakout, right? We're not gonna be so worked up about the second and the third. I want you to find this spot, the first breakouts. The second way we're gonna smoothen out the signals is by looking at volume data. So if you look at it randomly as a black box, you say, hey, there's a blue bar. I got my buy arrow, the RMO is bullish. I wanna buy above the high. Yes, mechanically and practically, all that's right. But when you look down at the volume, look two bars behind, look two bars ahead, and you notice that within that four or five bar radius of the signal, I don't have above average volumes. Now, by default, when you apply the RMO trade model template that's built into Metastock, and this is not an add-on, it's pre-built into Metastock, you will see the moving average on the volume, you will see the bar colors, you will see the arrows, you will see the oscillator, everything that I'm showing you out here, for those of you who are new to this. But what I'm suggesting is if this is a long-term breakout, if this is a first breakout where I have the blue bar buy arrow and the armor bullish, how can I conclude that this is a solid signal when the volume is just missing? There's a lack of money. There's a lack of interested participation. There's a lack of volume confirming this trend. So don't go with such a signal. Now look at this buy signal in August where you have the blue bar, the arrow is there, the armor is bullish again. So I've kept those three rules intact. Now look at a two bar radius behind and front. So if you look at behind, you've got some of the highest volume ever. So you've got the foundation of money. You've got the participation. You've got the interest there. So you want to be taking these trades right there and, and getting long. So very important. You want to pay attention to not just randomly, or rather, I shouldn't use the word randomly, but not just mechanically trying to say, hey, I've got my 3D buy, I've got my blue bar buy arrow and armor bullish and boom, I'm gonna go. Identify the 3D buys, 
identify the 3D cells, in other words, where you have all three in sync. And that's very easy to identify because we've got scanners to do that for you automatically. And then decipher as to is this a first breakout? Is this a breakout which has volume backing it? And then put some weight on it, right? You yourself can make an already solid system so much more successful, meaningful, and so much more powerful when you understand the pedigree and quality of the signal. Right? That's what I'm trying to get at. Focus first, breakout, iron them out by looking at slightly above average volume. There's so many of these false whipsaws that could come your way. You, and if you're mechanical, you say, hey, there's a red bar. I got the red arrow on the top. And I look at the RMO being bearish. If you look at the x-axis, you can see that RMO bearish. But when you look at the volume, look two bars behind, two bars forward, and you see no money coming in. You see that there's, this is not a signal that has participation. You know, how can something kick off a long-term trend up or down without money, without participation? I mean, it just doesn't add up. So you want to make sure that when I get a buy, I got the blue bar, I got the armor bullish. Now I look at the volumes being above average. Boom. I mean, I'm, I've got a solid signal uh, in place. So you learn two very solid ways to iron out those RMO signals. One is we're going to focus on the first breakout and give lesser weight to the add-on breakouts. We're also going to be looking at volume data so that we can see that we have above average volumes. Now, people say, how much above average? Well, I think let's uh, let's keep it simple. You want at least 15, 20% beyond the average volume because how are we going to have a big trend kick starting when it's under average volume? So, you know, even if it's slightly above average, good enough, if it, the more the better, of course. Now, what if a stop loss feels too large? Now, when you when we looked at the RMO, I always tested the RMO setup with a five bar high low stop. Now, what does that mean? Which means that when I'm buying, I always keep the five bar low stop. So if I've got a buy on the current bar, I'm going to count back five bars and see what's the lowest point in the last five bars and use that as a stop. Sometimes that's very near the current bar's low, sometimes it's not. It just depends on market to market. Similarly, if I'm going short, I want to be looking at a five bar high as a stop. So I'm going to count back five bars, identify that highest point, and then trade on the sell side of things. So when you have a stop that feels very large to you for some reason, you want to uh, you know, you want to control risk because we're all here to not just trade compulsively, but we also want to keep a control on our risk, which is why you have excellent tools and options. In fact, I kind of would like to say that if you feel that the strategy is very high risk, one is you can avoid trading. One is you can also go and buy options, which will cost you much lesser and you know your risk is limited to the premium that you pay. So for an entry level thought process, let's think of buying options as another way to uh, kind of negate some of that risk. Don't get into the mode where you tighten the stop loss. Don't tweaken or don't tighten the stop loss because then you're going to suffocate that stop so much that suddenly you might see that your stop's taken out and boom, the market's gone again in the direction you actually reckoned it would. So don't tighten the stop. That's not That doesn't leave a very good feeling all the time. And it's not good for your performance, not good for your for your testing either. So we rely on the five bar high or low stop and we're not gonna change it. What you can do is tweak the entry approach. As I said, options could be one. But another approach I like to use for those of you trading stocks is you could actually buy above the high of the bar. So let's look at an example here. You got a breakout with a blue bar. You've got the arm on bullish and the arrow obviously came in a lot before. It's not visible here, but you wanna buy above the high. The five bar low stop is right here. I count one, two, three, four, five, and that's my lowest point. So that's my five. So for those of you who think that stop is affordable, well and good, but many of you will feel that stop is too much in this case because it's a straight line move. You wanna buy a little bit above the high and why a little bit above the high? Why 50% above the high? Because you may be of the view that, you know, what if this is a runaway bull market? I don't want to miss this. There's one side of your brain which is saying that let's not miss it. I want to be, I, I can see this is a solid signal. It's backed with volume. It's a first breakout. You know, you got everything fitting in. You want to do it, but the risk is what's kind of uh, 
putting you away. So just buy a little bit there, maybe 20, 30, 50%, whatever you, whatever works for each one of your money management. That's a very personal emphasis. I'd like to keep it simple by half above that. Buy another half if it comes somewhere near the midpoint. In other words, between your entry and your stop. So if, you know, like you see over here, it dropped some one day over there, came between your entry, your stop, you buy the next lot. The idea is you've averaged out your buys and then, now there could be another situation. It didn't come to the midpoint. It just went zooming up. That means you took a smaller trade. That's fine as long as you're making money, right? But when you come to the midpoint, you get a better entry. You're closer to your stop and it just works for your money management. So see what happens over here. It rotates totally up from there, keeps your stop intact. Now, some people worry, you know, there's one or two little ticks of the armor that went down over here. Don't panic because A, the red bar lows are not broken. B, even if you look at the volume over there, that just doesn't justify going short. Totally under average volume, so you want to ignore these kind of signals, okay? So stick to the stop. Stick to your buy level. Stick to your stop. Keep the methodology going. You know, don't, don't panic uh, if your stop's not taken out. You want to stay with it. If you get an RMO sell prior to the stop and you have it all confirmed with volume, being a first breakout, etc., you can certainly lift that stop up further. So I was telling you trade identification is very easy because we've got a power screener. And just so that you are familiar with this, the little application that you see at the bottom on this chart on the slide here, it's a power screen application. So when you purchase the uh, ATM add-on, which is the automated trend modules add-on that I have designed. We have something called the Power Screener. It's a separate application you can run on your Windows desktop. And you can uh, straight away look at where do I have new buy opportunities? Where do I have new sell opportunities? And you can put them on various studies. So one of the studies that I'll talk to you about is the ATM RMO super filter. Uh, but you can simply put it across candlesticks, breakout catcher, strength weakness indicator, uh, the works, RSI, whatever you use. We've got 30 plus indicators up there for you to scan on. And it's a live real-time scanner which fires email alerts to you, gives you voice alerts. So scanning is, is so much easier with the power screener because I'm no more dependent on a user to run an explorer. The power screener is always running. The minute you launch the application, you have given it a stock list and boom, it's just done. So it's it's that simple, it's that efficient. You know, for example, if, if I used a 15 minute chart, which honestly I do quite a bit, it's hard for me to run a scan every 15 minutes. And what if I have five different scans I like to run? It just gets tedious. So the power screen is a huge efficiency tool, which ensures that the scans are live real time and it just does it for you. That whole situation of, oh, I missed a trade, doesn't occur and it fires an email or a voice alert to you as you desire. Now, for those of you who are hooked to the Explorer with the ATM, we've also included the integrated buy and sell scan. And this is really interesting because it's gonna find every single trade where I have the blue bar, the buy arrow and the armor bullish. And I'll tell you what's even more interesting. When you run that integrated buy and sell, it's not just gonna find out something we just had a new arrow today. It's gonna to find out those stocks which have today, for the very first time, met the three criteria. In other words, got the blue bar, got the arrow, got the armor bullish, and it could be that they've happened over three different days, but today is the first day where all three are in sync. So hopefully that makes sense. You know, the integrated buy and sell is really solid. And, you know, I would tell you, that that's what uh, we're looking for in terms of opportunity. And once you can shortlist that, all you're checking is, okay, how's the volume going with it? And, you know, for that, we even have a tool like the zone detector, which we've got in built into that scanner. But, uh, you know, basically that simplifies a lot of the effort. So trade identification with the technology of the power screen application with the Explorer is fantastic. And for those of you not with the ATM, you do have the basic RMO scans as well built in. Now, when you look at even further improving the existing RMO inside of Metastock, I built something called the super filter or what I'd also call the ATM RMO template. So if you right click apply template, it's called ATM RMO. That's the name of the template. It's, it's included with my ATM add-on. And uh, in that, what you see is the super filter. And the super filter 
marks out the RMO into four different colors. You've got a light blue, a dark blue, a red, and an orange color. And the good thing it does is, is optimizes to the stock that you're looking for, at the stock that you're looking at. So in other words, there are times it needs to make the RMO faster, there are times it needs to make the RMO slower to adjust to the behavior and volatility of the stock, and that's exactly what it's doing in the engines over there. You're looking at uh, trying to improve performance simply by uh, having these bar colors and it's quite fascinating how it does it you've got dark blue and light blue bars which tell you i'm bullish so you know all this little flip-flop that you saw in the armor where it went from bearish to bullish bearish to bullish that whole situation is ironed out so beautifully because when it's light blue and dark blue you're just simply buying right you're just not bothered about going short now you may say that oh that means the armor is slower no it's not slower it's optimized it is smoothing it out for you, but look at this over here. Here are the RMOs faster. It's given you red bars before the RMO has even gone negative. The RMO went negative many bars later, but by getting those red bars, you got alert right there. You could start triggering some small cells there. Maybe you start buying some puts. You start exiting your longs. You know, there's a lot that you get with that early bird entry. So with that uh, red signal coming in over there, you can quickly conclude that, you know, it's time to get out and you're getting a first-hand warning. So here it slowed down to smoothen data out. Here it saw that opportunity where the mark is probably paced up in terms of volatility and the need to make the indicators quicker so that it gives you better performance. So this tailor-made feel of the super filter is fantastic. I mean, just the fact that it smoothens out the existing armor and just takes your performance up so many notches gives you that feel that, okay, from dark blue, I'm rotating into light blue and light blue moving into red. You know, all that counts. And we further... Uh, you know, seeing that a lot of times when the armor goes from bearish to bullish, you can see how just staying one color helps you understand that, you know, just stay there, just lock yourself down there, wait, everything's not sorted yet. So it just helps you get rid of some of the chop. I would say, you know, if the armor alone was giving you six, six and a half out of 10, by adding the super filter, you're taking that up again a notch. If you're adding the fact that you're going to trade only first breakouts and only stuff that's backed with volume, you again push that hit trade notches up. And it's not just a low grade trade, which you're taking for three or four buys. An armor first breakout signal could yield you solid 15 to 20 bars in terms of returns so the average trade length that typically lasts i mean i'm i mean i've done a lot of tests and i've seen usually they bang in somewhere between the 17 to 24 bar kind of window I, i've always found myself uh, there in terms of a sweet spot but it's hard to generalize sometimes it's a lot quicker than that sometimes it could be slower but just to give you some kind of preparedness because when you trade options you also want to gauge how many bars or how much time it's going to take now uh, the rmo is being smoothened out with the super filter so like you see light a dark blue here when the RMO is negative, is a first-hand feel that you're getting an early indication that the potential of a trend change exists. So over here, when it's light blue, you're waiting for it to go red and orange for yourself to go short. So you can see here, the red came a little later. So you can see there's a lot of tailor-making, there's a lot of self-adjustment it's doing based on the volatility. So when you look at more of these charts, again, I've got virtually up-to-date charts here. This is again, uh, a chart of Tesla which we have up here, you can see how the uh, bearish and bullish phases are marked out for you in these little boxes, which I've done. And that's simply, the reason why I did that is you can see over here somewhere in between the 21st and 27th of August, we went from our more bearish to bullish, right? And again, bearish to bullish. So we had a bit of a move up, but you can see how the orange bar is just locked you down and said, don't attempt that buy and in the original rmo if you see there were some dark blue bars so you can see that smoothening effect that tailor-made effect working in so well well you can of course filter it out even in the older one when you look down at the volume you can see all those bars are with subpar volume you don't want to take that but the nice thing about this is the dark blue and the orange really smoothens out the data for you you know you don't get chopped so when you have those two or three bar little drifts down and drifts back up the super filter is a fascinating filter to have with the existing armor so you know uh, it's it's fantastic the way you can use this you have 
the odd time when the armor went, went bullish, went bullish. Agreed, the high is not taken out, you haven't bought, but also more importantly, it's still orange, right? Using the super filter gives you this advantage of not just having red and blue bars, but the orange signals to you that look, it's still not changed totally. The optimized version of the indicator is still bearish. Right, so when it does become dark blue and you, you see that the armor is bullish, you want to buy, but now when you finally look down at the volume under average, you save yourself from a lot of this. So you can imagine you've got six odd months of uh, at and up here on a daily and you can see how consistently from March on, I've been short, uh, keeping on thinking where to sell this and not getting excited when I have those little 10 bar run-ups, right? So it certainly adds a lot of value. And you know, another way it adds a lot of value is the fact that sometimes when you have a nice run up and you see five or six bars going up and the RMO is negative, the bars are still red and orange, you definitely have an opportunity to buy puts, right? So you can also be trading the downside. So the super filters, again, ironing out a lot of these areas. So when 50 bars stall up here and the RMO is going bearish, bullish, bearish, this being locked into blue colored bars, the super filter just tells you stay long. So huge, huge edge you develop with the optimized version. So some important pointers I've given you today with the RMO usage. The way I'm filtering it is I'm going to focus on the first breakout, give less weight to the add-ons. Honestly, I don't like to look at add-ons. Once you get used to first breakouts, you really want to stick with them. We also talked about filters where you buy strength, you buy above the high of the signal bar, you sell below the low uh, of a sell signal. You don't just go randomly buy and sell. The reason you need that is it confirms. Time frame integration, don't paralyze yourself looking at too many time frames. Just stick with one time frame. We're already integrating a short term, medium term, and long term. Indicator integration, the best way is look at the optimized uh, ATM RMO for those of you who have it. Otherwise, if you are very familiar or very comfortable with a particular indicator you enjoy using, let that, uh, you, you know, see if that helps you integrate it. I use a lot of Fibonacci. Uh, uh, as a guiding force, and I'm going to be talking about Fibonacci when, I, uh, when I'm when i live at Torrance. I, I really want to show you uh, different ways I use Fibonacci with the RMO, and one of the tools I really enjoy using is the uh, projection tool along with that retracement because it helps me forecast some kind of a target with a good degree of certainty. So the Fibonacci projection is what I use, and volume as I showed you today, when you get a first breakout, back that up with some volume, maybe 10, 20% above average volumes, back that up. If it's gonna be with under average volumes, you want to ignore those signals because that would give you, uh, you know, much more efficient performance. So we've also got commentary for those of you all who are new to it. You can always look at right click expert advisor commentary and in the ATM RMO template, it would signal to you the various uh, uh, different signals based on the different models. So I have a strength weakness index, a trend decider, and there's a whole video of resources available to you folks. So if you think that uh, I'm not covering everything, yes, I'm not, but there are there is a manual that you have access to. So I've written a whole manual on the ATM. So those of you who've signed up for it or intend signing up for it, when you go into your My Downloads, you'll have a PDF manual accessible to you. You'd also have access to the recordings of the masterclass that I do every year. So you have the 2017 masterclass, the 2018 masterclass, and a series of three other webinars. So I think it's a bunch of five or six videos which are really exclusively available to use users. And that, of course, is further backed by support by us. So remember, there's a lot of resources available and all these tools are well explained and docketed down for you in terms of video or manual, whichever way you prefer it. So that's the ATM RMO. That's how you can really improvise on it. But now my two cents on options. So we've we've heard a lot when we when we read about options. And the worst thing about options is that people complicate options. People make it sound something extravagant at times, complicated at times, something which is not meant for a beginner. Uh, and, you know, that's what often puts off a user. But I can tell you when you start trading options for a few months and you start tasting the success with it and you start seeing that this is a great instrument in terms of protecting risk, you really can't uh, stop using it. So number one, 
Majority strikes expire worthless. In fact, 80 to 90% of strikes do expire worthless, which means when you pay for a premium, uh, most of the time it ends up at zero. So the immediate thought process is why should I buy options, right? This is what you need to understand that when you buy options, there's also a flip side to it. Your risk is very limited and your reward is unlimited. So uh, don't put yourself off to buying options. There is a brighter side on that too. Uh, majority lose, majority of us lose when trading options because we're buying overpriced options or we're timing them incorrectly. And I can tell you, this is really the crux of things. The problem is that we are always buying options that are overpriced. And when I say overpriced, we're buying them, maybe when they're going up, you're buying the call and the calls have already run up. You know, the right way to do this is, yes, you can look at volatility. You can look at, you know, different option pricing calculators and all of that. But besides the jog and the simplest way I could tell you in terms of option prices, when you buy calls, try and buy a falling market. That's when calls are cheap, right? When you buy puts, Try and buy puts when it's a rising market, right? Where you're trying to top pick, right? Try and go counter trend. Try and go, uh, you know, see, use corrections to your advantage. The, the advantages and disadvantages of buying and selling options must be understood by all of us before we trade them. So a lot of people will say, hey, you know, it's much wiser to just sell options and just do naked option writing because even if the market just stays sideways or goes in my direction, I'm going to win. That is true. That is definitely true. You do have a larger edge in terms of hit rate when you sell options, but you also have a smaller reward component. So take care to understand those basics of options before you dive straight in. So what are some of the tools that I use with options? So typically when I look at the ATM RMO, uh, that's definitely giving me direction because when you trade options, there are three very important things we need. Number one, the direction. Without the direction, you're worthless. Because uh, if you're trying to hedge and you know you say, I'm going to buy a call and a put and you're trying to trade volatility, there could be times the volatility comes, there are times it doesn't come. But then hedging is also a costly affair because you're buying both sides. So I'm trying to tell you go directional. I'm trying to tell you uh, have clarity of trend. And having that direction is absolutely essential if you want to make a good trade out of your options trade. The second thing which I always think we need is timing. Timing of entry, timing in terms of a price target uh, where we could potentially get to. This is very important. So if, if you look at it, the first thing is direction. The second thing that I've talked to you about is timing. And the third thing is a target. So having a price level in mind in terms of target. And if I could further add to that, Another price level that's important to me is the key support level or the key stop level. So if you're buying, let's say, a call option, you also want to understand that, hey, I'm, I'm looking at this going up in about 20 bars. It can potentially go to this target. And as I told you, Fibonacci is a great tool there. And, you know, I gave you a hint that usually 15 to 20 bar lens is where those ATM are more trades lost on to. So you have an idea of direction. You have a rough sketch on the time. You can use the Fibonacci to get more precise on the target. Identify a key support level so that you know what's your stop. If not, use the five bar low as your stop. And really, these are the three different things you need. Direction, timing, and the price level. When I say price level, the target level and a stop level. If you don't have these elements clear in your mind, it's going to be very different, difficult for us to frame a, a good options trade, right? So one of the things I use very extensively is the trend decider suite. Let me dive straight into this. There are basically three trend decider levels here, a daily, weekly, and a monthly. So why do I call it a daily, weekly, and monthly? Because the trend decider daily is derived out of daily market data and updates every day. The trend decider weekly updates every Monday morning and is derived from weekly market data. And the monthly is updating every first trading day of the calendar month, right? So we have three different levels, the key support, key resistance levels, which get plotted out on a chart. So if I'm a day trader and I looked at, say, a chart of Twitter, and this is a, 
of a 10 minute chart, you can see how basically when the price is lower than the green line, the green line is the trend decider daily. So if price is trading below it, it's bearish. The price pierces through the green line, you're bullish. Breaks that green line, you're bearish. So you can get an idea as to how the stock is likely to be. What's the key level for the day? So especially someone who's really short term, intraday, maybe one or two day kind of perspective. The trend decider daily is going to update every single day and helps you gauge is today uh, the key level. What's the key level for today? Am I bullish or bearish? Someone like me enjoys using the trend decider weekly more because you know I try to extend my trades beyond the day. I want to trade them for a few days, and a few days could mean sometimes four days, could sometimes mean 14 days. So I'm quite flexible in terms of that interval. But I like to use the trend decider weekly, and I find that probably if you ask me what's the best one to start with, the weekly is really good. If you break the trend decider weekly, you know the whole week's bearish. Okay, you cross the trend decider weekly, you had a little bit of strength, but again, couldn't last through, breaks it again, you have a bearish week. So being above that red line tells you I'm bullish, being below that red line tells you I'm bearish. This is a chart of win uh, resorts. And again, the trend decider weekly would not change if you applied it on a 10 minute chart or a 15 minute or a 60 minute. It's pretty much gonna be the same level, right? So trade the time frame you really want, use the time frame you're comfortable with, but um, and just to give you a heads up, I like to use the hourly charts with that weekly trend decider level. Uh, that seems to be fairly efficient. So here's an hourly chart this time of the E-minis, and this time I've plotted the daily and the weekly together. And I'm gonna address this again from an options element as well, very quickly. So when the green has gone above the red, the green is the trend decider daily, the red is the trend decider weekly. So when the green has gone above the the trend decider weekly, so we're looking at strong bullish price action. So you can see pretty much all the way into, uh, you know, from mid August, I've got this chart open, all the way till the end of August, we've had that bullish trend. The green has been above the red, and therefore you've been in a bullish market. And I think this um, earlier on this week, we just broke through that level, the green slipped below the red around that 5th of August, around that 2,900 mark, and we're looking at a bearish. So you can see how it identifies for you the bearish and the bullish phase so easily. So let's recap the rules I'm looking for. Number one, if the price is trading above the daily and the weekly, and watch my pointer, somewhere around that 17th of August, the price is trading above the green, above the red. Price is above trend decider daily, above trend decider weekly, very solid. And if the green is also above the red, further solid. Now, all of this is in automatically interpreted for you in the strip at the bottom. Bullish means all three criteria are fulfilled. In other words, price is above daily and weekly, and the green is above red. But broadly, if the green line is above the red, you are really bullish. And what I tend to do is, you know, if I'm trying to write options, and, you know, again, Please write with care. Please understand that there is open-ended risk when you write options. So you do want to have uh, something to hedge against. You want to know and you want to understand the risk elements. But simply speaking, if I had to just write an option, when I've broken out into a bullish phase like that, I know that red line is going to be my support. I want to sell a strike price lower than that. So in other words, I would sell my put options uh, probably a few. Uh, takes below that. So I'd be looking at, you know, uh, selling puts and collecting that premium. And uh, the reason why I wouldn't probably buy the calls here is maybe the market's already run up, right? So instead, I'd probably like to buy calls when it rotates back into the below the daily but above the weekly. So I really like this, you know, often it rotates from uh, above the daily level, rotates into the weekly. You know, that, that's a nice area when you come a little lower than the daily and the closer you get, I kind of like this one the most simply because it's the first rotation down and also because it's kind of halfway between the daily and the weekly. And, you know, these ones are really far out, you know, like this little pullback over here. It worked out fine, but then, you know, it's it's there's still a distance. And I typically favor the first break, you know, the first pullback more than the second and the third and the fourth. So, you know, the, the degree or intensity of performance also reduces uh, as you go higher and higher up on signal. So you can use that for writing options. So when you first time break out of the trend, you can write those 
puts. Then you can look at buying calls when you, you see you have a five or six bar price drop. You've come somewhere in between that, you know, okay, I'm going to buy the calls. The maximum risk is the premium that I'm paying and keep a stop if you close below the daily and the weekly or that green slip. So the minute that gets a red signal, you know, like this at the bottom, you'll have the x-axis turning red. Use that bar low as your stop. So you don't even have to lose the whole premium. So fairly good strategy because you're buying calls on a drop. You're buying calls cheap. You're buying calls when the market's going down. So this can really help you condition. I mean, this is more, this is the uh, Dow Jones Industrials where you can see when the green goes below the red, how you have the bear trend. And the idea of showcasing three months of data to you, this is a two hour chart. You can gauge the performance. If this is the index, you know, this broadly gives you the uh, element of performance. And, you know, the reason is green is above red. That's where you're going long bullish all the way. Why have I marked these dotted lines? You're really not going short. Even though the price has closed below the daily and the weekly here, let's say, we haven't broken the low. Unless we break the low, I don't count that as short. Okay? So there is one area where you went short, didn't work out for you. Fine. I mean, but broadly in the last three months, I mean, other than that one little hick there, you're not too worked up. And what if I, you know, what if I went and wrote options there? Uh, you know, I definitely want to cover up. I want to cut that trade the minute I see it closing above the daily and the weekly. And particularly if I see that bullish appearing, you know, you can always flip that trade around and cut that out. But don't let one bad trade in a sequence of three months suddenly uh, work, work you up. Because again, there's no holy grail to this. But the idea is see with what simplicity it's kept you short on this down, bullish on this way up, and bullish on his way up. So it's very, very interesting. Now you can see the most recent piece of data that I have is a fourth of September when it closed below the daily and the weekly. You see the first trickle of bearish. You want to make sure that the low is broken off 25,800 to get a feel of things. Now I haven't introduced the monthly. And the monthly is this uh, lavender colored li uh, line over here. It's, it's one of those things which I don't use a lot, but when I write options, I de definitely want to look where I am. So uh, let's look at this. You have an RMO first breakout, okay? You have the RMO moving from a bearish to a bullish. And if you also see that I'm crossing all three levels, daily, weekly, monthly. So look at the price being above daily, weekly, monthly. Look at the fact that the green line is above the red line, okay? Let me recap this for you. What did I do? I looked at the RMO going from bearish to bullish. I looked at the price being above daily, weekly, and monthly. I looked at the green line being above the red line. And when I have all those in sync, I've got a really solid signal to buy equity, if not buy, uh, you know, whatever instrument you're comfortable with. If you have stock futures in your market, you could be buying stock futures. But another thing that I can definitely do is write options. I could say, you know, I don't think that this level is really going to break down because this is the lowest of the three levels. So, you know, I could say I want to uh, sell the 31 puts right and collect the premium because I, I clearly think that uh, the market's going up so someone who sells puts is basically someone who's bullish so similarly whenever you see uh, you know th that's another situation here when you see a closing below see the rotation from bullish armo to bearish number one number two closing below trend decided daily weekly and monthly is below the green red and the lavender line so that pierce of all three that whole you know, confluence of three different levels. I had so much of weight in the first breakout. I mean, you could definitely say I want to write calls even. You can say, look, uh, even though the market's dropped a bit, you can say I want to write those calls, collect that premium. But again, please remember, I'm not asking you to do naked option writing. You must understand the risks of writing options. You must understand that you want to back yourself up, get a little experience, know how you're going to hedge yourself on such trades. Okay, maybe you have equity against those uh, options that you write. So there are a couple of ideas there in terms of getting those points where you want to write those options. Here's another example. This one's on Square. Uh, and uh, if you look at this around the 5th or 6th of August, you have a situation where, again, the three levels have all kind of come in together and it's closing above the daily, weekly, and monthly. See, I, I mean, that's a beautiful point. I know it's not the first time the armor is rotating up, but at least I can use the fact that those three levels have scrunched in together and 
And the fact that I'm trading above all those three, I want to make sure that this is a bullish trade, keeping in mind that, you know, the lowest level of those could be a stop. Like pretty much here, if I'm right now there, I, I understand that if I break that 82 marker over there, maybe I get bearish because that's when I'll break all the three different levels. And if you're someone who just wants to use the signal that the green's above the red, I mean, beautiful. Look how it's kept you in that trade all the way well in sync. You know, just another food for thought, another little piece on time frame, which I, I kind of try and work with a lot, is you want to right click and select chart window properties and adjust your trading sessions because often you're including post close data. You know, you'd see by default, I think Metastock marks it as 9.30 a.m. Well, again, I'm talking from a perspective of U.S. equities, 9.30 a.m. to 16.02. It should be 1600 in my opinion because I'm not necessarily trading in that post close, which is what points me to think that why do I use a two hour chart? You can see here I've used a 130 minute chart. And you know, the craze for that is you have 390 minutes of trading in a day because you have six hours of solid trading and then there's 30 minutes more. So six and a half hours. If I had to break them down into three bars a day, that's a 130 minute chart. So, you know, use some common sense there. Take out the post closing ticks. Use intervals that are even because, you know, you need to be theoretically correct at the same time. You know, I prefer a 65 minute chart in the U.S. equities than a 60 minute chart. And, you know, if this doesn't ring a bell, uh, just remember, if you're using an hourly chart, you've got six hours of trade and then you have one half hour of trade. So, you know, you take out the theoretically uh, important element on that chart. So I, I really want to take care of some of those bits of going into deciding what time frames I want to work with and then adjusting myself. Now, another indicator I can use a lot for options is the counter trend strategy. The counter trend indicator helps me identify potential uh, tops and bottoms. And very simply, it's finding out high volume areas where it's gonna stamp buy and sell signals. So when you look at these different buy and sell stamps, these are automatically plotted by the expert wherever there's a, a high range of volatility breaking out or a high range of volume breaking out. And that's automatically plotted. What I want you to identify is if the market's going up, I want the first sell. If the market's dropped, I want the first buy. If the market's gone up, I want to look at the first sell. Look at the first signal in chain. Don't look at every little signal. Market's dropped, first buy could be a potential opportunity. Now these are, you know, these would give you a lot of signals and need you to iron them out. So look for a sell after a rally up. Okay, look at the first one. Look for a buy after a rally down. I mean, I don't like to necessarily use the standalone, but I, I definitely use this as a little bit of a pointer that look, I've gone up and this is my first sell. I could have some rotation down. If you're trying to use this as a, as a standalone signal, make sure your stops right at the high over there, or when you're buying, use the stops at the lows. Okay, now use the first in chain signal. Like for example, you get a sell, make sure you sell below the low sometimes see a cell it doesn't really trigger another important thing is use something like a moving average so here you know this is a chart of netflix and hourly again you can see uh, i've marked the three circles the three circles are perfect counter trend trades you had a rally up first sell rally down buy rally up sell now why have i not taken these buys so, you know, the problem with these buys right there is if you work, your, you know, you look at buying over here, you're just going to be buying and get stopped. But how can you save yourself from something like this? You know, go down halfway, go down, say, like to a 30 minute chart, or even if you go down to a 15 minute, you'd notice over here, they don't really break out. When I say break out, I like to see it going above the 50 day average, of, you know, and please seeing the armo getting into a bullish zone. So you can see often you get signals over here, you got three different cells, even though they appear counter trend, when you try and reconfirm it with a lower time frame, right? A lower time, just half the time frame, you haven't really gone RMO negative and broken the 50 days. So I kind of use the 50 day and the RMO negative together in sync and see that, you know, to, to make the performance get a little better. But if you have a rally up like that, let's look at this one, you got a sell over there. How do I time the sell instead of just selling there? I could get down to a lower time frame and see, okay, that's the point I want to take that sell, even though I got the signal there, because that's the point me are more rotated. That's the point I broke through the 50 day and I can see it, you know, turning down from there. So that's how you can really uh, simplify 
the counter trend signals. Of course, there's a lot more I've got in the manual for you. There's a lot more of practice that you can do on this, but the first signal in chain is what I want you to look at and try and use a moving average. Always look for buys below the average. Always look for the first one. So even if you get the first one there, look down a lower time frame if you really want to try to time this better because uh, when you're counter trend, nobody's going to tell you to short right around there. Right. Timing it is so beautiful because that's when you start buying uh, put options over there. You may start with a few puts and then say, OK, when I rotate down, I'm going to sell short fully. Uh, you would get those options at ridiculously cheap prices because when the market's rallying up, everyone's busy buying calls there. Very few are really looking at buying puts. So counter trend is the approach to get well priced options. And we've got a scanner for you to do this. So the final indicator, which I use extensively, and this one's probably the one I use uh, most of the times, is the RMO2. The RMO2 plus and minus are actually two indicators which we cram into one window. And again, the, there are templates provided for you. So right-click apply template, and uh, you have the ATM RMO2, which you can apply there. And what you notice over there is, Every time the blue, the blue being at a value of plus one is a sign that the market's bullish. Every time that pulls back to zero and just lines up, that's an opportunity to buy calls. I don't really recommend just coming to zero and banging back up. I want you to see it come to zero, spend a day there. Come to zero, spend a day there. That's the point. That's the bar you want to buy the calls. So why is that a good bar? A, the market's dropped. B, the last five days have been dropping. C, the last seven or 10 days have really been sideways. So you're in a low volatility corrective phase. So call options are going to be fairly reasonable. That's the point I want to buy calls. And usually in about you know, 10 for 12 bars, you'd see it firing up to a new high. So usually if you don't find uh, you know, results, 15, 15, you know, 15, 17 days go by and you don't see results, you can just get out of the trade instead of latching on. So don't get into this one because it's just a bump and run, okay, like this. If you do, we'll make sure you just use the low as your stop, right? I want you to see it idly coming down. Again, this is the S&P 500. If you're wondering what I'm looking at, this is the daily S&P 500. You came down recently, mid-August, flattened out there. That's the bar. You see it flattening out the next morning. You go and buy on that bar. You're buying when the market's dropping. Calls are cheap. And of course, today, you'd be doing very well on those. So this is a really nice way, a really good way to trade the RMO2. In fact, I've got a scan which identifies. I call this the pullback phase. A pullback meaning where the blues come down to zero. That's a pullback where you buy call options, right? Similarly, if you're selling short, I mean, this is an example with Alibaba. You can see over here how uh, in the last two weeks, we had a rotation. So the red was in minus one or bearish zone, and we pulled back to zero, flattened out. That's the point you buy puts. So when the market's going up, if you buy puts, when it flattens out, it's going to be cheap. It's going to be cheap, low cost puts. So your risk is very limited to the option premium that you pay. Besides, if the trend has to turn, you know what's going to happen? You're going to see something like this happening. Let's look at this one here. You got the red pulling back to zero, you buy the puts. What if this goes to a value of plus one? So the RMO2 goes to a value of plus one. You say, okay, I'm gonna use that bar's high as a potential point to cut the trade out. Okay, so you don't even have to lose all the premium. Another thing which you may be wondering is to, uh, what are these different bar colors? The orange, it signifies the original RMO oscillator itself. That's what's being marked out for you. So, you know, when you get a sell over here, why have I marked a little explosive bomb there? Because you've pulled back into zero, you flattened out, you want to buy the puts. And when you when you kind of bought those puts, you got orange colored bars, which means you got the armor one and two in sync and you had that, you know, boom. So there you are. So when you get the orange colored bars, uh, you know, the trend's probably changing again below the low. You get the orange, low is not broken. So often you bought a call. I mean, let's say you bought a call option here. It came down to zero and you waited 15 bars, nothing's happened. Sack it. I mean, don't don't wait beyond 15 to 17 bars unless you've got a lot of, you know, unless it's a really low cost premium you're sitting on, you probably will change trend. So the RMO2 pulling back to zero, really nice opportunity to get in on those calls. Beautiful example there on the S&P 500 where you could have gotten mid-August 
uh, you know, where you can see this in action. So all of this is going to be scannable. You can have RMO2 scanning for you, find out stuff that's at plus one, minus one, find out stuff that's in pullback. And all of these can be scanned simultaneously. So you could have 10 different indicators scanning for you, identifying these opportunities on timeframes and intervals that you particularly trade on stocks that you particularly trade. So that kind of uh, gives you a bit of a hang as to the different tools I use with options. Uh, and more importantly, I'm trying to look at where three trend decider levels sink in. That was one kind of model I talked about with the RMO, uh, the ATM super filter, the ATM RMO2, the counter trend. These are great methodologies where it can help you look at even getting into calls when the market's dropping and buying puts as the market rallies up, saving you from that classical problem of buying overpriced options. So for those of you right, I showed you how I was using the trend decider levels and the sync of the RMO to uh, guide me into where I could safely write through. Uh, and again, please be aware of the risks when you write. Uh, but I think with a little education and a little practical trading, you'd even uh, really enjoy writing options because I'm pretty sure you have the natural edge because even if the market stays sideways or it goes in direction of your trend, you tend to make money on that. So I've really rushed through a lot of topics here. But again, the idea was to kind of initiate you into the various elements that I'm using, and of course the manuals and further recorded uh, uh, videos that you have access to will further guide you. But for those of you who, who want to hear more of me, just to give you a heads up, I'm going to be there at Torrance, California next month uh, talking to you, and I have a, uh, you know, a solid four or five, I think four sessions there, each one being 90 minutes, and you know, live in person is always something I enjoy the most. I always talk about uh, uh, you know, different aspects which I necessarily do not and cannot do in webinars. So that's a great way to connect further on if you have the uh, ability to come down there and register and if registrations are open there. And, uh, you know, that's a great way we can follow along. And if not, well, you've got a lot of resources there to back you up. And, uh, uh, I mean, I'd like to conclude by saying thank you to each one of you for coming in today. And I'll turn it over to Jeff and to take over any questions. And he's going to help you in terms of uh, more about the ATM add-on, how you can sign up. I think you can also educate them about the event, too. Over to you, Jeff. All right. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, good to have you. If you do have some questions for Rahul, there's a couple that have already come in, but it's a good time to type them in. Uh, Shirley, welcome to the class. I'm sorry you were uh, late, but we will send you a recording in just about an hour, exactly. So uh, don't worry about that. Let me go ahead and get the screen sharing put over here because I just want to talk a little bit. We have a, an unbelievable offer that we're doing for ATM uh, and the Power Screener. So I'm going to go ahead and show my screen here. Uh, I'm going to make sure that it's the correct screen. It looks like it is. <laughs> okay. So uh, as, as Rahul alluded to, and Rahul, that was a great session. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, but as Rahul alluded to, uh, the RMO ATM 2.0 power screener, and he talked quite a bit about it. I just want to tell you, uh, number one, it's our uh, most successful subscription-based add-on that we've ever had at Metastock. Uh, customers love it. Uh, they subscribe to it. Uh, I was talking to a guy just a couple of days ago that needed to get a subscription renewed to it. So if you haven't tried it, uh, we definitely want you to try it. Uh, personally, I love the power screener. Sometimes I just open it up. If I'm really busy and I have time to look at charts just to see what's going on for the day, but it'll give you real-time alerts. It'll give you real-time uh, email alerts. If you have a Gmail account, it'll give you uh, profit and loss. It'll give you, it has all of the ATM indicators on there as well as about 31 or so other indicators you can go in and kind of track on a real-time basis. If you're not using Metastock real-time, it's a great dashboard type of view. Uh, it works very, very well to kind of keep you up to date on everything. So uh, after that, uh, in addition to the power screener, which is probably worth it by himself, you're going to get all of the systems that Rahul uses. Um, uh, you're going to get uh, systems that help you with breakout. You're going to get counter trend. You're going to get the new takes on the RMO. Uh, you're going to get the trend decider, the strength weakness indicator. It's really uh, something for everybody depending on what you think the market is doing, or let's say you wanted to be more of a trend follower, you'll have the trend decider suite. Um, it's a really well-rounded collection of indicators and systems that are actually available. 
And I, I want to commend uh, Rahul for putting together such a well-rounded package. Um, oops, where we go? Okay, so the offer that we have, normally if you just lease the RMO ATM, what you'll do is you'll pay $129 per month for it. If you get it on uh, as a result of today's webinar, you'll actually pay $99 a month. And that's not a discount on your first month. That's a $30 discount on a, every single month you pay for your subscription. Okay, so you get a permanent discount instead of paying $129, you can pay $99. Uh, Rahul has done something with this particular webinar soft series that he's never done before. If you pay for the first month subscription, you'll actually get the second month of this add-on for free for Metastar. So it's a fantastic offer. If you, uh, if you pay for the yearly, you'll get a discount built into the price. Uh, normally, it's actually um, $13.50 a year. Uh, that price I had changed yesterday uh, based on the $129 price, but we'll give you that permanent discount of $1,069 per year as part of it. Uh, and if you do purchase the annual package, you'll get a one-on-one -on -one training from one of the Viratech software specialists. So uh, it is an add-on for Metastock. You need to have Metastock. But if you don't have Metastock, we'll actually give you a free trial to go along with your uh, subscription to the Power Screener. So to take advantage of that, what you'll do is you'll give us a call. And I noticed that I didn't save a couple of changes to this PowerPoint. So let me make a small edit here. I want to give you the US phone number. So uh, we were doing some set events last week. And um, unfortunately, I just didn't hit save. 800-882-3. We can do some real-time editing. You can give us a call at 800-882-30-40 to take advantage of that. Um, or you can chat on with one of the sales reps we have here. Good group of guys that can help you. They can answer any questions that you may have on anything, really. Metastack.com slash sales chat. The other thing that I do want to mention, and uh, unfortunately the slide for this is gone, but we will improvise. Um, Rahul had mentioned a lot about our uh, the event that we're doing uh, in uh, the Metastack Users Conference. It's October 14th and 15th. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually kind of talk to you a little bit about the event. So let me um, pull it up here. Uh, it's a great event. Uh, for those of you that have been before, this is our website. I'm just going to kind of talk to you about the event on the website. So if you've been to a Metastock user conference before, you know it's a very good way to learn a lot of information. Uh, Rahul is a very good speaker. And he tries to, he actually goes in and talks in very, very good detail about um, some of the systems and that's stuff that he he doesn't even uh, kind of talk about on air. Uh, but in addition to that, we have uh, six guest speakers that we're going to have. We've got Anne-Marie, um, who is one of the best uh, uh, out there. Uh, I was floored when we went to a, a, a Vegas boot camp a couple of years ago uh, as she did a presentation. I always wanted to invite her to a user conference. So she's going to do a great job. Uh, we have Rick Sadler that's speaking. We have Don Fishback, who does a lot of options where it looks for non-directional strategies. All in all, it's a two-day conference with six different speakers. So I'd encourage you to come. If you sign up here on the website, you're going to get a price of $499 when you sign up. But what we're going to do uh, as a special uh, part of this webinar series, $99 uh, will get you uh, access to this full two-day six-speaker event. Uh, it's one of the favorite events. I'm going to be there this year um, uh, that we do all, all year long. So uh, I would encourage you to do that at the special price. I'd rather pay uh, $99 than $4.99, and I would encourage you to get there. So to take advantage of that or to get set up for the uh, RMO ATM, again, the RMO ATM is our most successful subscription add-on of all time. Uh, just give us a call, 800-882-3040. Or give us, uh, you can also chat online at metastock.com slash sales chat. So, um, uh, Brett said, uh, okay. So, Rahul, let's take just a couple questions. I know we're running a little bit late. Trey, there's, uh, uh, I don't know exactly how many spots are left. Sorry. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any clue, to be honest with you. So, oh, oh. I think I muted. Um, Rahul, let's see here. Okay. 
Rahul, are Hopefully. you still with us? <laughs> there oh, you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I muted your microphone just so that there wouldn't be any background noise, and then I forgot to unmute it. So we did have a few different questions. Um, yeah, sure. But just a quick correction. I think there was a slip of tongue that you said 14 and 15. The event's actually on the 13th of October and 14th of October. So quick correction okay. in case you were making notes. Thank you for uh, keeping me honest. Um, in any case, uh, uh, that's a good correction to make as well. Um, uh, Shirley says, what is the RMO ATM? Shirley got in kind of late. She was a little confused by the times and difference. So the ATM is pretty much what we talked about uh, with all of um, Rahul. It stands for Rahul Mohinder uh, Oscillator Advanced Trading. What is the actual acronym for that? Rahul, I don't it's remember. Auto, it's automated trend modules because we've got all of these systems automated right from the scanner to the template to the expert. So they're all synchronized together. So automated trend modules. Uh, and so instead of having you uh, repeating what we just talked about, I'll just have you watch the recording when it gets to you in about an hour, surely, because that's pretty much what we discussed it all day long today. Uh, we did have an, a question early on. I believe he was talking about, um, let me just go back to it a little bit. I promised that I'd ask you this. Um, so after you get a 3D buy signal, mm -hmm. how many bars do you wait um, after you've confirmed the arrow, the bar color, the RMO, the above zero? Uh, how many bars do you wait for the hide to cross for the ticker to trade? So when everything matches up, is there a yep. time limit that you give it? Uh, great question. No, I won't take. A, I won't put a time limit to that. But usually, you know, typically in the next five or six bars, you do take out the high. Well, sometimes it just takes it out the next bar or two. But you know, even if I had to wait ten, I'd wait ten as long as the RMO stays positive. Uh, that trade is definitely on. So there's there's no time limit. The time limit realistically is if the RMO turns against you, that's when you pull off the trade and you no more want to trigger it. Okay. Here's one from VJ. Uh, when do you look at volume with the RMO ATM filter version? Uh, great question. So when you look at the RMO ATM, we've got one study out there called the Strength Weakness Index or the SWI, and we do that. We did that in yesterday's webinar. So it'd be good if you could take a look at that one. And we also have more resources available on that. So the Strength Weakness really looks at the volume. Uh, the zone detector, which is something I didn't talk about today, because I really wanted to look at this more from a options perspective as well. Uh, the zone detector does factor in the volume. So if you're using any of these two indicators, you don't need to manually look at the uh, volume. But uh, yes, with the RMO signals, no harm if you just took a peep down, which is why I've kept it part of the template. Okay, Trey fired me. So I'm just gonna pack my desk up right now. I think he was firing, he says I'm fired over the date mismatch. So in any case, um, <laughs> you're welcome, BJ. All right, uh, Trey, good to have you here today. Um, Rahul, that looks like the end of the questions. I appreciate you're spending an extra 23 minutes with us today. Uh, good class. Thank you so much, Jeff. I'd like to thank you and each one of you out there who attended. I hope I sincerely added some value to your uh, uh, asana of knowledge. And uh, I'd encourage you to try some of the techniques we talked about, go through the resources. I really hope this helps you become more and more independent with trading. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, everybody. Trey, for that particular question, if you uh, want to email me, I can kind of look it up for you. Uh, and my email is just, uh, thank you for your interest, by the way, in coming to the conference. But I'll type in my email right here. It's just jeffrey.gibby at metastock.com. So uh, I want to thank uh, Rahul for coming. Um, it's always great to have him in here. Uh, I want to thank everybody for attending us uh, uh, this morning, for me anyway. And uh, as always, we'll see you at the next event.